Hi everybody, thank you for watching my video. Today is an anemone flower and it's been so crazy lately with, in the whole world, with uh, the coronavirus. I needed to paint something bright and happy and beautiful. So this anemone flower just popped up. I needed a blue flower and this anemone flower popped up in my head, found it online and um, here we go, I'm painting it. And surprise, surprise, uh, the meaning of an anemone flower, uh, a blue one in particular, I'm pretty sure, is it fends off evil and disease. So perfect that it's time to paint an anemone and get it out there in the world. So um, what I'm doing now is, I, as you can see, I sketched out the petals just with a regular uh, pencil and um, a graphic, gra uh, graphite pencil. And I did the center of it just with some Payne's Gray, wet on wet, and I'm doing the petals here wet on wet. So that first layer right there, I do with a little color, a little lavender, then I go in with deeper. And the beautiful thing about watercolors is that you do your first you know, layer of of water and then the you do a second you just drop in some pigment and it just stays where the water is it's just amazing it's beautiful so I like to do my first layer uh, with just a little a little color so you can see there I'm kind of loosening up um, I'm just kind of it's a fairly new brush for me and I love 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 this brush so I'm just kind of playing around getting loose seeing what technique and what kind of um, shading I can do, especially with that little brush, because I really want to <clears throat> focus on the lights and the darks and that sort of thing. Um, the flower, actually, it's it's called a blue anemone, but it I ended up painting it more violet, and it turned out that even in the picture, the sun is coming through the reference photo. The sun is coming through it in such a way that it's just... It's looking violent. It's looking almost like a transparent blue, and the and it's turning it violet. So maybe it's half and half. I don't know, but I I really uh, I love the colors and and I really love the the dark blue. This is a cobalt blue actually, uh, is the main blue that I'm using. All Windsor Newton um, watercolors, and I'll put all the colors I used and the brushes I used in the description below. So this is just a lot of layers. Um, just again the base layer and then going over it lighting it up softening the edges right there um, as you can see it's just because again this this flower is in a lot of light hitting the light mostly on the left side so you'll see um, um, trying to capture a lot uh, a lot of light on the left side and deep deep richer blues here on the bottom right so you can kind of see it'll gradually get a little darker and a little darker on the right side and then on the upper left side where the sun is hitting it it'll be really really light and um, uh, pinks and and lavender so I'm doing the back petals first as you can see I'm kind of just and you want those really light and blurry because you want your focus at least I want my focus this time on the center of the flower and uh, the front only like maybe you know like the front petals four or five main petals in the front that you really want in clear focus and then the rest are kind of blurry so you know it's not overwhelming it's kind of really pretty and and then you get dimension that way too you kind of get depth when when you have blurry edges and um, blurry in the background and then a lot of of detail in the in the foreground and then also what gives you a lot of depth too is of course contrast so um, even if you don't have these colors these exact same colors you could paint this flower you know red and just do you know pinks for your first layer and then do a really dark um, red for the the center so instead of the blue you would do just a really deep red so here um, let's see. Oh, well, I think it's in the next, um, the next frame coming up. I get into a little bit of a pickle. So I'll, um, kind of describe to you what I, kind of what not to do. So what you really want to do is I'm doing one petal 
and then I would move on to, okay, I would do one petal. That petal is really wet right now, so I don't want to do the petal right next to it because then the water and the color will bleed right in. So you can see my next petal is on the other side of the flower. So that petal that I did right before, I'm letting that dry. And then when that's dry, I do a couple petals on the other side. And then when that's dry, then I go back and do another layer. So now I'm just uh, letting the, the paint bleed. So I put the pure blue cobalt pigment. I just dip the brush right into the pigment. And then, okay, here is my mis here's my mistake coming up. You can see I got that petal next to it wet. And I think it starts dripping. Yeah, it starts dripping in there a little bit. So that was just, I don't know why I did that, just a little mistake, and I kind of start messing with it, and uh, then you just kind of have to just say, okay, forget it, let it go, let it dry, and uh, be done with it. So um, here again, just layer is one of the, I think the last petals of the first layer. So here we go. This is so meditative, especially with, you know, times like what we're doing right now with staying inside and you know, everyone is kind of on the anxiety, edge of edge of anxiety, high anxiety, and, um, you know, painting and drawing is just so meditative and medicinal and therapeutic. I could go on and on. So I really highly recommend it, even if you don't know what you're doing. You know, nobody ever knows what they're doing when they first pick up a brush. That's okay. It's just practice, practice, practice. So... There is, so you can see that, see that dark blue petal right there, the, the one that's really sticking out there, it's supposed to be in the back. Okay, that one really looks horrible and it really bugs me uh, later on. So I end up erasing half of it, getting it to blend in. So a little bit, a couple more minutes here in the video, you'll see how I uh, fix that. So I erase, I use the magic eraser which is amazing, the, the, you know, it's like the guy with the muscles on the front of it, um, the magic eraser, it's, <laughs> it's really for a kitchen and it erases all kinds of stuff. So anyway, um, that is like a godsend with, with using watercolor, especially when you're starting out and you make mistakes and stuff. It's just like, oh, thank you. That and Q-tips and, uh, you know, dry watercolor brush, you can lift up any kind of paint, no problem. So. Here we are, I'm trying to, okay, so we're going for the second coat, and I'm keeping the lights light. Um, I really don't want, I would rather everything stay on the lighter side until the final few layers, and then I can go really, really dark and use pure pigment to do the contrast, and then I'll use white for the highlights. I use white gouache for highlights. So you can see I'm starting, so that for sure is a dry petal, so this is wet on dry, which is why it's so pigmented there. And uh, I'm just getting, again, starting to to go to go deep and to get the shadows and to get the contrast and blending a little bit there. And now that's a great example of, see how that front petal just popped out because you've got the dark blue there um, and then the white of the petal that just gives it that great 3D look. And here I'm creating a shadow and it's, I'm not really sure if it's a shadow of the petal in front of it or it's a shadow from a whole nother um, flower above it that's not in the photo or, you know, leaves or something. So um, when you don't know where the shadow is coming from, it's a little hard to duplicate. So I'm just kind of rolling with it and uh, just doing what I see uh, on the reference photo and um, just seeing what happens. So. Here I go. This is probably the third layer. Again, this is, so this is wet on dry. And um, I'm kind of playing around with the colors. I'm trying to keep it blue. But again, I keep, I keep going for the violet. I just love the, the pretty color of the violet. So I'm just adding more, more red, a little bit more red. And I'm trying to get, now this is one of the petals that I really want in focus. And I want a lot of detail. So you can kind of see that happening. Oh, this is where I did the petal next to it. Yeah, and I got into a little trouble. So I shouldn't have done that petal right away um, because the top petal seeped into it. So you can see I just stopped working on it. And now I'm doing the petal, uh, two petals away from it because I'm letting uh, those 
two petals above it dry um, before I go at it. So uh, before I go at them again. So there you go. That's more just heavy pigment. And even though it looks really dark and kind of looks a little scary now, you can easily just blend it out and soften it up. And you know, it watercolor. It looks really dark when you first put it on, but you know, it lightens. You know, I would say almost 30% it, it, if it's it, if it's not like dry you know super dry paper it's gonna lighten quite a bit so and if you're not using super super like pure pigment it's gonna really lighten so here I am um, just kind of messing around in this area trying not to get the colors to bleed into one another I'm also kind of figuring out which petal is which I think I was having a little problem there so uh, I just kind of left it alone and moved on, let everything dry, and I'll come back to it. So here I am actually, after layer after layer, uh, I am doing some highlights. And so this is a white gouache, and I, and I did some of it with um, a, just a touch of the violet mixed in. But as you can see, is, like that's pure white. And then look how it just absorbs right into the paper. So, I mean, it's, you know, almost 80% gone, but I really like it because it looks soft, it looks natural, it doesn't look, look harsh, um, which is kind of what I'm going for for certain petals, so other petals will, will stick out. So, again, the paper is pretty wet, um, so it's really stick. you know, the water is, the white is really absorbing, as you can kind of see here. So eventually I, I just let everything dry and I'll go back over it. Um, and I do have a dry brush, but sometimes I, or a dry, um, a dryer, and I, sometimes I just like to let it dry naturally and uh, not rush it and just, you know, let the paper do what it wants, let the color do what it wants. Adding a little vibrant colors there. Um, that color, I can't remember the name of it, but it is in the, in below. I don't use, I think I only use two colors, um, the blue and the, um, the red, I think it's quinacridone red. I'm not sure. Um, so I don't, I don't really use, I think maybe one other, um, teal color, um, that I, I did for a few highlights, but this is kind of cool because I've only used two or three colors. Um, it's really all just about the highlights and the tones. Um, so this, this, uh, is pretty dry. I think that petal is pretty dry. So the whites are kind of sticking out a, a little bit more. Um, and you'll see, I just go, I just go around and, uh, doing some fine details, get it lighter. And then I'll go through it again, um, and get more darks, get the darkers kind of more close to the center. Um, I get more dark blues and all that down the road, you know, eventually. And, uh, but now it's just blending right there. I don't have anything on the brush. It's just, just slightly, slightly damp. And I blend the colors together so they have a blurry effect. And, um, this petal, I decided I wanted some more detail. So I went heavy on the white and then I'm, I let it dry for a minute. Then I go back before it gets too dry. Then I go back and I blend it out as you can kind of see. So... I think this is, oh, okay, here we go. This is fun. This is, that petal is bugging the crap out of me. So he's just sticking it way out. Doesn't even belong. Total, like your eye goes right to it. So I am getting rid of him. I'm using Arches 140 pound cold press paper. And uh, I just love this paper. I, I was working on hot press for so long because it's great for detail. And when you use color pencil, Hot press is kind of the way to go if you use color pencil, watercolor, and then color pencil. Um, but if you're going to do something that's just all watercolor and you're going to do a lot of wet on wet and a lot of water, you definitely want to do cold press because it just absorbs so much more and it has that nice little texture. Of course, there's more texturized cold press, but this is just a regular cold press. So then I, ru I rubbed it, but not too much. Um, and then I just picked it up like little pieces with the brush and then I let it dry. I didn't mess with it. I just kind of let it dry and then I went back and filled it in just a little bit 
um, I would let it dry, then fill it in until I had kind of what I wanted. So you can see down there on the on the right, um, I kind of have just a few more highlights on there, and I didn't mess with it too much. So I guess um, something happened with the camera when I did the little the little seeds the in the center there, the little little black dots. Uh, the camera did not come on, so I apologize about that. So here I am doing the background, and I'm just adding a little yellow. So the complement of purple, of violet, is yellow. So I wanted to do just something a little bit to give it a little pop. And uh, so I decided to do a little yellow background. But then there's some, you know, there's blues in there too, and the complement to blue is orange. So I ended up, after the yellow, before the yellow got too dry, I ended up doing um, uh, orange in the, um, in, the, uh, in the corners there, too. It is, uh, oh, right, the cat. That is Cadmium Orange by Windsor Newton. And this brush that I used, I just love. I put that on the, um, the description in the bottom, too. It just, again, you can get such a beautiful fine point. Um, it holds just, you know, a really nice amount of water, not too much, not too little. You can see that petal over there um, that I erased earlier, um, letting it completely dry still. And uh, in the end, I end up touching it up with some white and then went over it with it with a little violet and some shadows. And it ended up looking pretty good. Looked all right. Um, so here, coming up here, is the end of the flower, the painting, the final result. I hope you guys like it. And please subscribe and hit that like button. Thank you.